Okay, so now I want to talk about subsurface scattering. So normally, if you have, let's just say we have a ball, and this is just very solid. What's going to happen is light is going to, let's say the light's coming from here, light. It's going to come down, it's going to hit the object, and we're going to get our separation of a light side, shadow side, just like what we talked about all this time. You'll get your highlight, and that's the uh, point where the light, uh, it's perpendicular to your vision. So this bounces to your eye, you get the highlight. And then this will all get progressively um, darker. You'll get you'll get your shadow where the light does not hit. You'll have your core shadow. Maybe you'll have some reflected light bouncing back up. But if your object is translucent, uh, let's say um, you have wax or skin is is that way. Um, leaves are like that. There's lots of things. Honey's like that. You have anything where it's like um, even marble. It's like that too. Uh, you have something that's translucent. What's going to happen is the light, yes, you'll get your direct light. You'll get all the same things. But some of that light is going to actually uh, penetrate the object. And it's going to bounce around in there and then come out the other side. And it often, I mean, it comes out because it's bouncing around. Like, let's just say there's a lot of, this is going to be... Um, very not to scale, but let's say there's a bunch of particles, right? Because this is just made up of of atoms and things, and I'm I'm, I'm scared always of getting too scientific because I don't know really. I just have like the vague general idea of what happens. So anyway, light comes through and it bounces around, and then uh, some comes out, and then some actually doesn't hit, but it just comes out. But what happens is there's a tendency. And I think this is pretty much across the board that when the light comes out, what happens is it tends to warm up the shadow, especially it warms up the core shadow and um, it gets more saturated. So things to uh, remember are the light, you get warmer in the shadows and more saturated. Now you're not going to get brighter than the uh, saturated, you're not going to get brighter than the direct light because like this highlight because that's the direct light if you think about it that's the light at its full power and then if it bounces around or if it goes through this um this object it's obviously going to be weakened so it can't be as strong and that's the same reason why reflected light can never ever ever be brighter than direct light because that makes no sense because let's say we have light coming and it's at 100 percent even if it's coming at an angle like this and it bounces against a wall, already, okay, lost some energy. So maybe it's only at 30%, and then maybe it bounces off the floor, and then it bounces back up. So maybe now it's at 15%, now it's at 10%. So that light has been significantly uh, reduced in, in power. So that's that. Um, let's just do some quick examples. Let's say you have a finger, right? So, got finger. Um, there's more fingers doing their thing, but let's just focus on this. Okay, so first thing that's important is to realize that the light's got to be coming from behind pretty much. I mean, it could be coming at an angle as well, but we're going to see it much more um, if it's not like, for instance, if the light is from the same position as we are, we're looking, we're not going to get as much subsurface scattering that we see because the light's got to, let's say this is the light. It's coming down like so it's got to pass through this object so if our eyes are looking at this point um, terrible eye but um, we're gonna see just the highlight and all that but if we're looking from this angle what we're gonna see is 
we're not going to see the light because it's being blocked, but then we're going to see the light that comes through this. So we'll get much more subsurface scattering. So anyway, that's just to keep in mind. So for instance, let's say you have a head and you have ears. Well, if you have the light coming from the front, you're not going to get this super warming effect. You will still get a warming just because ears have blood inside and so it's going to warm up. But if the light was coming from behind, that's when you're really going to get that lit up. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing, so let's say we go back to our finger. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that the finger has bone, right? So the area that the bone is, is not going to be as lit up as... Um, as the other part, like the skin without the bone. So I can quickly, quickly paint it, but, um, and it, it depends again on, um, it depends on the complexion of the person exactly how uh, the colors are gonna behave. But for the most part, it's gonna get warmer. So let's just say we have that and then I'm just going to render it without the the subsurface scattering first. Okay. And now where it get where it's going to get warmer and more saturated is going to be in this area. So this would get warmer if the light's coming from here and then as it uh, gets towards the bone, that's probably, I mean, it's still going to warm up a bit and bones are semi translucent, I think, or I don't know. I don't know the term, but, um, it's going to block it out more. And then around the edges where is where it's really going to, uh, where it can really get more red and you get that effect of, um, almost like a, like a glowing, Right. I mean, this is a very, very extreme, extreme version of what, what can happen. But I think, think you get the idea because you've probably seen it a million times. So anyway, there's that. And, uh, and why does, why does it always get warmer, even if it's not blood? Like for ears and fingers, we get it. Yeah, it's bouncing around and there's a lot of blood and it picks up that. Um, but why, for instance, on marble or in a leaf, why does it always get warmer? Um, what I heard, and I may be wrong, so if there's any people into uh, optics, I don't even know if that's the right term, whatever, you know, physics of light. Maybe you, you could explain it better, but uh, it's the same thing as the sunset thing where um, I mentioned in another video you've got different wavelengths to light. So red's wavelength is like, kind of like that. It's very flat, like doesn't, um, the amplitude is not high. And then the wavelength is very long. And then blue, the amplitude would be higher and the wavelength would be shorter. And again, you know, this isn't accurate to scale or anything. It's just like a, a general idea of the way it is. So let's say I had light and I had a bunch of particles in the air and I had red well and this is let's say this is your eye okay so what are your chances of seeing red well the red's gonna ooh, 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 ooh. oh good chance we saw the red oh no this part bounced off we didn't get to see the red um, and then what about blue there's more chance because it's like higher up that it's going to hit a particle and get scattered. So anyway, it's the same thing with an object um, that's translucent. You've still got atoms and particles, all this stuff in it. Again, sorry, I'm not very good in science. I just understand the basic premise, or this is what I've learned anyway. So then the light, the red is more likely to make it all the way out the other end where the blue is probably going to be scattered more and the red gets scattered too. But anyway, all right. So now let's, 
I'll just walk you through an example of uh, subsurface scattering. So here we just have a cylinder and let's make this into a candle. So I'm not going to bore you by actually painting everything. I've just got to walk through. So we'll do that. So the first thing is just to separate the light and the shadow. So obviously the light's coming from the left and it's going towards the right. And that's fine. But this does not look like wax at all, right? So now let's just apply our little tip, our secret, which is just to warm up the shadows, especially um, in this transition between light to dark at the core shadow. So we'll do that. Okay, so now it's warmed up, starting to look more like, I don't know if it's a candle just yet, but it's, it's something, it's warmer, right? All right, so then I just added, a, I just smoothed this top so we don't have this uh, super sharp edge. Like, yeah, it's kind of looking more like a candle. And now I added the, uh, the direct light. So you're still going to get uh, reflections and, and direct light hitting things. So you get that and it's like, okay, starts to make more sense. Um, and then let's assume that this was, uh, there's actually a flame here. So what we can do is just darken the bottom. So it suggests that, you know, it's lighter near the top where the, the fire light would be, the flame. And then uh, a couple of d color dodge layers to brighten it up around where the, the light is. So now you really get this feeling of subsurface scattering. And this is really what makes it more candle-like, in, in my opinion. It's the... Uh, it's the fact that, yeah, you get all this, this glow. So then all we need to do is we can uh, just, can do, I can make like a wick. So that's going to be pretty easy. Just get, you know, like a wick. And just draw that in. And it's probably going to be uh, a bit it's probably going to be a bit darker near the top where it's burning, so you can just lighten it up near the bottom a little bit. And then just draw in the, uh, the fire. So I'll just make a new layer, set it to color dodge, and check these two boxes. Take, I don't know, maybe a white. Probably can just use a hard round, and there we go. And maybe I can make a layer underneath that, and just get a bit of uh, reds or oranges, and it's going to give that impression of like. And that's that's probably overdone. <laughs> that flame is it's a bit too much, but you get the idea, right? So anyway, so that's our, that's a big thing, you know, the subsurface scattering, get it warmer around uh, the shadows.